The issue here is climate change, global warming. Small air-cooled gas engines are notorious polluters with no catalytic converters and because they run hot, they're air-cooled, they emit nitrogen oxides, which are vicious global warming gases. It is estimated that seven hours on a riding lawnmower is the equivalent of a hundred thousand miles on a pollution-controlled car. A one electric lawn tractor of today, the electric ox, here it is, faces a four-fold price hurdle over the gas counterparts, and that is only with lead-acid batteries. Its design and, and its name are still holdovers from the original steam-powered pullers that replaced horses. But now, modern tractors have to push, pull, carry on board, and power their dependent implements. So things have evolved a lot since those days. We find a significant inherent advantage of electric drive that seems to be not thoroughly exploited as yet. The components of battery electric drive already are or they can easily be constructed in the form of self-contained independent modular units because they're connected only by flexible power and control cables. They need only be made light and compact enough to handle manually and provided with a standardized quick touch interconnection system to lead us to a new concept a universal battery electric kit that installs in a wide range of electric machinery. So we connect battery modules and two controllers. We use two because we want to go with differential steering. We quick attach electric motors to planetary gear cases to build ourselves electric power takeoffs that would drive our traction wheels and another one to drive our implements and our hydraulics. We assemble a square tube frame and quick attach any number of traction wheel modules to have a universal rolling frame. We have a totally new type of super versatile prime mover. An universal utility machine we'll call a multi-configuration electric implement carrier. More electric modules will be needed for larger EVs Two motors can be stacked to drive their half shafts, which also gives more electric connection options. An example of such is the LEM 2x2 motor. It's two motors in one case and it's marketed in the U uh, UK. Nothing here is fixed in place. Everything is at the owner's option. So it's not what it is. It's what you want it to be. It's what your imagination and ingenuity come up with from this assembly kit. And, okay, um, if you, um, for, for heavier loads or to scale up its capability, what we do is we add more wheels, either tandem as shown before or in jewels. Casters can be arranged uh, uh, more on one shaft. That's, uh, that's the way we scale up. We, we don't trade up or so, we just scale up its capability that way. Now here's a scaled up version of a towed version. You can see that there's a number of uh, forks to carry a heavier load and a number of um, main wheels uh, to support that heavier load. This is the articulated version. Uh, it, it's a copy of the, um, the other uh, types, the conventional types, articulated machine. This is a planter picker version. Uh, you sit in there and you can pick vegetables or you can plant seedlings, whatever. This version is a rudimentary bucket loader. Uh, it's supposed to be a front-end loader of a sort. Uh, this is a tricycle gear mower, uh, obvious, uh, and uh, this is a dump truck. You can see that the operator sits high. You can put that seat uh, uh, in any position on the machine anywhere and as high as you like. 
that the, here it's arranged high for, uh, for visibility. This is an articulated version with uh, the stacking box, uh, uh, boxes on it. You can see you can put as many wheels as uh, makes you happy there. This is a uh, sidewinder mower sideways. Uh, it's um, probably good for trimming around the um, sidewalks and all that. Okay. Uh, where are we now? Um, okay, and uh, now. If you are paranoid about leaving a blade of grass uncut, you can stack two tool trucks in series, one behind the other. They're all the same um, pipe uh, tubing. The, you can stack two of them and have two mowers in series. Uh, you can, of course, turn the other mower and the forks around uh, to be cutting on the left side, on the opposite side. And if that uh, more suits your fancy, take the forks and the mower deck off and hang it on the first uh, one over there. So you'd have a double acting, double wide uh, ganged mower. Eh? Uh, this is uh, tells you that uh, you can load up as many wheels as you like uh, uh, until you're pleased with the result. And uh, this is a walkie unit. Uh, it can be a pusher for a cart or you can install a, a dependent implement in front. It's uh, just a walkie version of the uh, prime uh, mover, eh? You want to go to that? Okay, we'll talk about this. If you, if you can uh, put a deck on it, a, a, mo a, a circular blade and a, and a motor, you have a, a mobile um, deck saw, platform saw. A lot of implements on it can be using, can use the forks as a backbone. Uh, here's a plow and a, and a pipe puller plow. Uh, using the forks as a backbone, they're just bolted directly on. You just need the, you just need the blade. Uh, here is a rudimentary tree spade. Just hang spades on on the forks and see what that happens. Uh, this is what I call two garrows, greater harrow combo. You have teeth on one side of a big angle iron and a greater blade on the other. And this one is two in series, which is actually a box scraper. It's a scarifier teeth on one end, on one side, and a greater blade on the other. Uh, this tells you that if you are using a, a cement, mix, a concrete mixing barrel, you can lift it, drop the mixture into the forms and all that. You have a mobile transit mix on a small scale. Uh, this um, version is an auger, um, soil or drill or whatever.